Today on Up and Adams, what are we underreacting to? Everybody's overreacting all the time in the NFL. What needs to get more love and more discussion on the airwaves? We'll do that. Plus, we're going NFL trade dating. That's right. I've never played on twin Tinder. Twinder, Tinder. We're going swiping right and up and down and aft and fro and to and fro and all of that. And we have, oh, I love Niners legend Vernon Davis stopping by the show. What is... It's up. Oh, I like the cable here. <laughs> it's really good. <laughs> Hold on. Let me adjust. Move this around. <laughs> this, this people is a helmet that I asked for, like a little girl on Christmas asking for an easy bake oven uh, from Santa Claus. I asked for it because it's a thing of beauty, and then they sent it to me. Seth Tanner, the Bengals, when they wore it on that beautiful night. Uh, but I wasn't ready. Well, I was also, you know, a procrastinator. I also left it at home day after day for about two weeks. But also, I wasn't ready to commit fully to the Bengals. So many questions, so much tumult, turnover. But now, as Rafiki would say, the young Simba and the Lion King, it is time to give it its rightful and thoughtful place over here on the Up and Adams wall, right next to, I mean, this has got to go away. I can't watch this anymore. There's Eli Man. I'm sorry, Eli's done. Uh, this way? What well, looks better? Chef's kiss. Look at my outfit today. Who dresses like this? Nobody. Welcome to Up and Adams. Here's the deal. We're going to talk underreactions here at the top of the show. I need yours, by the way. Over. At up and Adam show on Twitter, Marissa's cracking up. It's fine. Well, we were we were supposed to, you know, uh, we'll get to this, all of this. But this is does it look? Is it sticking? Out? Oh, I don't know if that works. I think we need to find a better place. Marissa, can you can you help me? We got to move it somewhere. I, I mean, are we going to displace the chargers? Yeah, move the. Yeah, sorry, um, Chad Powers. Yes, that's it right there. Is that good? Marissa, that's Mar everybody, Marissa. Let's take a, oh, that's much better. Yes, the Bengals helmet. And you're thinking, why are you doing this? They wore that forever ago or whatever. Well, it brings us to our underreactions as we head towards week eight, because I do not think, and this is the perfect day to do this, uh, and, and this team has had my heart for the past year and a half now, but we are not making a big enough deal out of the fact that the Bengals offense is fully back. And Joe Burrow has eight total touchdowns and no picks. He's accounted for over 800 yards of offense over the last two games. Jamar Chase has had back-to-back -back games with over 130 yards and two touchdowns. Jamar Chase, Boyd, and T. Higgins, who I believe we're talking to this week on the Up and Adam Show, are now all on pace to put up over 1,100 yards apiece. The Bengals, if you're looking, if you look at their schedule, guys, they have the uh, most generous, softest, I would say, a part of their schedule coming up. Browns, Panthers, they have their bye week at the perfect time, and then they have the Steelers. This, my friends, that, that helmet ain't going nowhere. That is here to stay because this is a huge opportunity to make a run at the likes of the Bills and the Chiefs. They've gotten better every week. That's what I've been looking for. Just, you know, are they going to improve? Is he going to be on his ass the entire game for four quarters? Is Zach Taylor going to spice it up a little bit and find ways to get Jamar Chase and company open? And they are finding their way and they're getting better week in, week out. So they took care of things against the Falcons. They look the best that they have all year. I do think it continues. Uh, and I think that they're back. So let's, you know, bring in Matthew Hamilton here. Uh, I think you got to get on board because it's not going, they're not going anywhere. Oh, I'm on board. And I, I agree with you 100%. I don't think they're going anywhere. And I think a big reason for that is they've changed their approach now offensively. Not only does Burrow look more decisive, more locked in, and is he getting the ball out quickly? Look at this. They've become almost ex an exclusively passing team. Look at that, 40 dropbacks, Yikes. just 10 handoffs in that week six game. Last week, 45 dropbacks to just 18 handoffs. And by the way, nine of those 18 came in the fourth quarter when the game was already out of hand and they were just running out the clock. We're really seeing this offense totally in the hands of Burrow. I know Mixon is a great running back, 
but they're getting him involved more in the passing game. They've really pretty much abandoned the run completely. Over 75% pass over these last two weeks, and it's working. But we don't like that. We like the balance. I, I can't sit here and say, Aaron <laughs> Rodgers, Tom Brady, you need to run the ball, and then like you, you want Burrow out there uh, tossing the thing 75% of the time, man. But see, I think the way that this offense is constructed with the playmakers that they have and with Burrow's ability to just make those quick decisions, get the ball out accurately, it works for them. And, you know, it also covers up that some of the faults they may have in that offensive line. They're yeah. not as good a run-blocking team as some of these other teams. And when you run your offense that way, quick tempo, getting the ball out quickly, it slows down the pass rush as well. Those guys get winded. They're not perfect. And there's a big question, you know, the big question is Zach Taylor to me. Because you're showing the play calling, you're impressed with it. But there are some decisions he makes and he has made through this season. It's not much different than last season, but, I, you know, you want to step up. You want it to not all be on Burrow. Yeah, and there were a couple moments even in that win. There was a fourth and one where they line up in an empty set. And I'm not opposed to throwing the ball on fourth and one, but at least give the threat of run. When you line up empty that way, the defense knows what you're doing at that point when you line up in an empty set. So I agree. There are still some some areas of concern there, but overall I love the direction that they're headed. And it looks good. You, I'm sure you loved this clean, clean helmet when it came out. Oh, it's amazing. I've, I've been wanting that helmet for since they introduced those those uh, all-white jerseys. I've been wanting that helmet, and I'm so glad that uh, the NFL lightened up on those rules a little bit and we can finally get it. It's true. Let's talk a little ravers here for my second underreaction. Now, they've started to figure it out. AFC West, you know, no picnic for anybody, but they started in the hole big time. They were 0-3. And I feel like we pretty much buried them from a media standpoint. No one's talking, no one's literally, no one's talking about the Raiders. Maybe James Jones, who's of course here at FanDuel and works for them and covers them. But so far this month, they're, you know, you have to give them credit where it's due. And if you're going to slam them for an 0 3 start, then you better be giving them love when they start getting it together, which they have. They've won two of their last three, the one loss being a one point Monday <clears throat> night thriller against the Chiefs. And it's really the way they're doing it that's given me some confidence that it might be sustainable or even evolve into something better down the stretch here because they've been feeding the beast that is Josh Jacobs over the last three games. No, why is no one talking about this? He's averaging 27 touches for 174 yards per game while scoring six touchdowns. And, you know, I'll, you know, Hamilton, we had Mark Ingram on yesterday, Bama guy, loves Josh Jacobs more than anything, and he's like, man, he kind of, I think, is going into this weekend because they've got a bout against the Saints, knowing that he, in what world is he going to be able to put up the numbers that Josh Jacobs is as he's on such a roll. And uh, you told me a crazy thing on the phone the other day, so I'd like to give you the platform and the space to say it. Yeah, and I love as, as the Bengals offense has gone one way, the Raiders have gone the other and are really feeding Josh Jacobs. And, again, I don't think Derek Carr is Burrow. We've seen a more efficient Derek Carr, a Derek Carr that more resembles what we saw last year in these last couple of weeks since they've gotten Jacobs going. And I don't think it's crazy to think they can make the playoffs. FanDuel has them at plus 280 to do so right now, even at 2-4. and four. Uh, I think when you look at the landscape in the AFC right now with the Jets injuries and the Chargers injuries, we're going to see those teams slip a little bit. And look at these next five games. They're all very winnable. So I can see the Raiders going on a little bit of a run here and working their way into that playoff picture. I don't think it's crazy. The the studio is silent. <laughs> with the, this is... I think they're going to do it. I'll, I'll come right out and say it. I think we're going to see the Raiders in the playoffs. And what, what happens in the rest of the AFC West? Zoltar. I think the char. I, I do think the Chargers with those injuries. I think it's starting. To, they're starting to catch up with them. I don't think Herbert's right with those ribs. He's pushing through it admirably, but he doesn't look like the same guy right now. I think the Broncos are in a lot of trouble. So I think we see the Raiders climb their way up to second place in that division. And wow. as I said, I think with the Jets too. I, I know getting James Robinson was great for them, but the Elijah Vera Tucker, Tucker injury and what that Huge. does to their offensive line is concerning. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm not even against it. I'd be happy to see it happen. And, you know, Josh McDaniel, the – Josh McDaniel is the advisored one uh, for him to have some success. And I do sort of like that they're quietly coming out of nowhere. Like, everyone's still focused on Russell, even though, like, you couldn't get me to I, – I can't – you. I know you've got family in Denver. I can't watch a Broncos game right now. Yeah, it's tough. Uh, you know, the Brett Ribbon experience wasn't much better last weekend, and you know, I don't know – with those injuries that Russell has, how healthy he's going to be at any point this season. And they don't even have their first-round pick to fall back on because they shipped it off to Seattle. So 
right now, really the Broncos just have to try to figure it out with what they have and, and do the best they can because, yeah, they, they don't even get the reward of that draft pick if, if things continue to go south. Woof. And I, of course, called Jerry Judy being this <laughs> the second coming of Randy Moss this year and saying that he would be an all-pro. Hey, maybe he will be in Green Bay. Who knows? Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. We are playing draft trade machine or trading game or something later on in the program. But my third thing that we are, uh, as a media group, as a fan base, as people who love the NFL, we are underreacting to the fact, and I'm always on trend. Look at this denim on denim. I dress myself in the dark. I always know what's popping out there. Uh, running, running the ball is back in a big way across the league right now. And you say, oh, teams always run. No, 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 my friends. Right now there are six teams averaging over 150 yards per game on the ground. To put that into perspective, only six teams have done that in the previous five years. And if you look at all of those teams, they're mostly having success with it. The undefeated Eagles, stunning 6-1 Giants situation. There's literally some sort of bug flying around. <laughs> the Ravens, even the Falcons and the Bears, who have been uh, way more competitive than people thought, are running the ball. So uh, I ask you, what does it all mean, Hammer? Well, I think we're seeing it's kind of the natural evolution of the league. You see these ebbs and flows at times. Defenses have gotten smaller and quicker to try to defend the pass because teams have become so pass heavy. So we're seeing certain teams that may not have the weapons in the pass game start to invest in the run game and go the opposite direction and, and just try to play this physical brand of football. And I think when you look at the teams that are really having success on that list, they run a lot of designed runs for their quarterbacks, whether it's the Ravens, the Eagles, the Giants. And – that not only adds another element of misdirection to the run game, uh, but you pick up an extra blocker as well when you use your quarterback in that way. Right. So it's not really something that we've seen teams comfortable doing. They don't want to get their quarterbacks hurt. But I think the Ravens kind of set the precedent for using Lamar the way they did and showing that it is a sustainable way to run an offense in the NFL now. It's true. And then, so if it's so on trend, and, and, Vo, and by the way, Vernon Davis coming on, always on trend, always knows what's going on. And if this is what's happening in the NFL and there's so much success with it, the crazier thing and the bigger underreaction is why we are not killing Aaron Rodgers and these offenses, like Tom Brady's offense, even more for not relying, relying on the ball and running it more. Like, what are they doing? Yeah, that's a great point. Uh, and they have the personnel to do it. Aaron Jones is having a phenomenal year when he does get the ball. Leonard Fournette, the same thing. So you, you have the personnel to do it. I don't know why we haven't seen them do it. And speaking of on trend, I mean, this is, uh, I used one of your coupons to pick this up from Marshall's yesterday. <laughs> so uh, I hope you like it. I like it, along with Tums and a bird feeder with three sails and a crow's nest. What a weird yeah. memory I have. Uh, all right, we've got, we, uh, by the way, big part of today's show, your underreaction. So please hit us up on Twitter, uh, at Up and Adam Show, with those. Now, Jordan Spieth, we tweeted he's coming on. We thought, you know, he's a FanDuel family member. Uh, so we th thought he was coming on. Hammer will be back on. I, I think we're trying to find another date. I think there's like a some sort of situation, a brewing and a gas here uh, in my ear. But we have Vernon Davis, which I'm even more excited about after this. An absolute legend. I mean, we can't keep up. We can't keep up. We tried to do the research, Vernon. Show us those teeth. Come on now. There they are. Oh, Jesus. Well, that's <laughs> aggressive. I do love Rafiki. Man, I miss him on the field, but he sure is shining off of it. Our next guest, a tight end in the NFL for 14 seasons, two-time Pro Bowler, Super Bowl champion, and currently, I mean, what what doesn't he do? An actor, a producer, a musician, a, a, a mind, a visionary, taking on the entertainment world by storm. Vernon Davis, good morning. Good to see you. Good to be here. Good to see you, too. You know, last time I saw you, and I, this is why I just want to get into this right away, we did a Smirnoff uh, sort of string of commercials together uh, as we're smearing off partners, which is so, so fun. We perfected your Cosmo catch, but we're on this set and Vernon's done some acting. I've never done any acting. And they're like, Kay, you're doing your broadcasting voice. And I'm like, oh, smear off, what are you the ingredients? And they're like, calm the F down. You're being crazy. <laughs> and you are so wonderful to me and calm and really helpful with your advice. So thank you. And that was quite a day. That was quite a day. We put some work in, Kay. 
Yeah, we certainly did. Now, you were just in Miami. Uh, with, tell me, with Smirnoff or without, or what, what were you doing? No, I was with Smirnoff. We were partying. We were celebrating the undefeated <laughs> Miami team in 1972. It was, it was amazing. We were partying like it was 1972. Jason Taylor came through. Whoa! I brought my brother. Vontae Davis was there with his wife. And it was a great time. It was a wonderful time. It is, you know, your Cosmo catch is delicious, by the way, which we, uh, of course, are loving and loving everything that you're doing because you were absolutely everywhere. TV, films, music, and then you have this, you know, incredible post-football career that you're working on. When did you know that this is what you wanted to do? I knew this was what I wanted to do while I was playing in San Francisco. I would break away um, on the, on my day off and I would take a, I would take a class at the Shelton Theater of Art in downtown San Francisco. And that's where I fell in love with the world of acting, producing, just creating in general. And then once I got done with football, when I knew I was going to hang it up, I had a script and I had some partners of mine and we put this movie together. We brought in everything that we needed to, to make it work. And it was a success. I mean, it certainly was. And I'm looking at some of the things you've done as far as film work, and there's other things to talk about. But John Malkovich, Bruce Willis, Morgan Freeman, you've been in films with them. What was your big takeaway from working with such accomplished actors? It was awesome working with those guys, especially Bruce Willis. I caught him on his way out. His last two films, Gasoline Alley and A Day to Die. I was a part of that. And, you know, I'm elated to have that experience and share it with him. But Morgan Freeman was the highlight of my post career everything that he stands for. I mean, this guy's 85 years old. And to watch him be the first one on set and the last one to leave, it told me a lot about who he is and why he's at the, at the space that he's in. Because he put the work in. It's all about the work that you put in, the preparation over time. And he's shown it. He's been super consistent. What else did you learn from him? Prep I mean, preparation over time, you know. Consistency, you know you're a Super Bowl champion. Did you pick up mm -hmm. any like, acting tips from him? Yeah, we had a scene where I was I was going up to Morgan and I'm about to, yeah, I got a knife in my hand and I'm approaching him. And I just look at the knife and I tossed it. He said, no, 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 try this. I walk up, I drop the knife like this, and then I look up and I walk towards him. I was like, wow, those subtle details. It's always, it's all, a wise man told me, he said, every action has a thousand little actions. That's a you're blowing my mind. I mean, you're, you, you went from working, all I'm thinking while you're saying this is this man went from working with Morgan Freeman to Kay Adams one day. <laughs> that is shoot, you poor <laughs> thing. That's, I feel so bad for you. Uh, did you, when you were younger, like a kid, did you have the chops for it? Like, did, could no, you act? No, 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 no. Really? No, I couldn't, I couldn't paint. I couldn't act. I couldn't do anything uh, but play football and basketball. A little soccer here and there. But... When I arrived in college, my teammates, I had some teammates who were art studio majors, and I just found it fascinating. So I went to my academic counselor and I said, I want to change my major. So mm -hmm. I did. And after that, I didn't look back. I started finding so much creativity within myself. I opened up, the art, and I opened up an art gallery in San Jose when I was there, and I just kept going. Yeah, I remember that, and you coming on Good Morning Football and talking about it, but then you sort of delved into this world. And I sat next to Nate Burleson for six years, and he also, super creative mind. Football was a big part of his life, but never the biggest creative outlet for him, and always is looking to do arts and music. And speaking of music, you released a music album. You sing, you rap, uh, and I, listen, teach me how to bounce like this. Like I love this. it. <laughs> well, look at that booty shaking. What is happening? <laughs> Tell me all about this. Yeah, we, we filmed it at the Commander Stadium. It was Bounce Like This is, it's, it's like, a, it's a movement. It, I don't know if you ever heard of Go-Go, but Go-Go is a staple in Washington, D.C. It's the music that I grew up listening to, the, the music that I grew up rooting for. It's just, it's the culture, and people live for it. They love it it makes them happy it's just it brings joy to the city and for me to be a part of something so special is is amazing i got with my with my one of my really good friends named tone p who did a lot of stuff for wale the rapper wow. and he came into the studio he had this beat and i started writing to it and it just came together nicely so now we're going we're gonna to work on an album uh you're gonna do a whole album i mean this is like we're working on an album yeah this this is this is you singing did you had a bounce like this? One more time, let me hear y'all one time. This is Merman. Oh. 
Hey, you got it, Kay. Look at your arms. I see you. Yeah. Uh. It's amazing. I love it. <laughs> uh, so we have an album coming that's insane uh, and performances and all of that. But let's talk a little bit of football, shall we? Let's, Let's do, do it. it. Uh, your former team, the Niners, big trade that they made for Christian McCaffrey. Mm. You think it'd be a game-changing trade. Do you think he makes them Super Bowl Shh. contenders as you, of course, you know, went through a similar ex uh, experience being traded from the Niners to Denver midseason and then you go on to win yourself that ring? Well, sometimes sometimes it can be tough depending on how, how fast you can absorb the playbook because you, you go from one playbook to another, especially midseason. It's it can be it can be difficult like it was for me like pay, playing with Peyton Manning new system I have to learn everything and you have to think it takes guys sometimes from what April all mm. the way until the season starts that's a lot of time to be able to learn something so it depends on how he can how fast he can pick up the playbook and how consistent can he be because McCaffrey over the years he hasn't been super consistent if you look at his numbers one year he had a thousand yards. The next year, he's at 800, 700. Yeah. So if he can show that he can he can um, have that consistency that the team needs in order for them to be able to make it to the championship, then I think they'll have a chance uh, to do some really good things with the addition of, of McCaffrey. What do you mean really good things? Does does adding McCaffrey, let's say he stays healthy, because that's the hedging, <clears throat> right? Because the inconsistency comes from injury. Is this a Super Bowl contender? I would say yes, they they are Super Bowl, Super Bowl contender. I'm just I'm just thinking about the talent across the board. I mean, they're super talented. I played with some of those guys like Trent Williams. He's one of the best tackles to ever play the game, in my opinion, with the things that he can do. Then you have Debo, who can do everything. Now you have not one good running back on the team, but you have two good running backs in Debo and McCaffrey. So. Like I said, if they can stay, if they can all stay healthy, yeah, I think they will be a Super Bowl contender. For sure. What are what are they missing? You think? I think they need to figure out a way to get more more of the players involved from an offensive standpoint instead of just trying to rely on Debo because he he's not everything. At some point, guys are gonna they're gonna really try to figure out how to stop him. Right, right now they're having a tough time, but uh, I think they're really gonna have a really figure it out. So they got to rely on the other weapons to to make plays and get open. And defensively, they have to do what they've always done, which is stay healthy and make plays. Yeah. they. I mean, they don't have a Vernon Davis. They have a Kittle, though, but there's not many like you. You were an elite tight end. You were an elite oh, athlete. Thanks. And you and, you know, I had Delaney Walker on last week to give him love for his retirement. And I know that you two are super close. Y'all both sort of changed the game and really did some things out there in San Francisco. Is there anybody in the league right now that reminds you of yourself? There's two guys in my mind, in my opinion, that would be Travis Kelsey and George Kittle. I mean, those guys are unbelievable. What they can do when they when they line up against someone, they can they create a mismatch. And meaning that they can get separation, they catch the ball. Uh, they know how to they know how to separate from the defender and they have great hands and they can block at the point of attack That's what you want to you want all of those qualities in tight end uh, Especially if you're you're trying to win games. Yeah, Travis Kelsey has a Super Bowl ring We need George Kittle to get one. Hopefully uh, they can get there Delaney Walker I'd like to hear you talk about the, uh, him a little bit because he retires with Tennessee. It was really beautiful and they had all these messages from former players, and they were very, it was very much Tennessee Titans based, and then there was you. And you stuck out, and it was important for you. So, can you know, talk to me, I guess, about like what's behind your friendship and, and what you'll remember most from playing with him. You got to say D Love, King. D Love. D Love. That's what we call him. Had a bounce like this. D Love. Okay, D Love. No, I asked him, I asked him, I had a, I remember the first time I met D Love, Delaney Walker. And I walked up to him and I shook his hand. He said, gosh, bro, you're shaking my hand really hard. <laughs> I, I was like, I don't even know you. You come, why, why are you talking to me like that? <laughs> and we became the best of friends. We became the best of friends. And I knew he was super talented because when he got on the field, he could, I mean, he could run. I mean, he, I felt like he was faster than me. Yeah, a lot of people on the team would say I was, I was faster, but I think he's, he, was, he was faster than me for sure. And he was just a playmaker. Norv Turner was there when we arrived in 20. Wow. 2006 and he tried his best to utilize Delaney but the problem was is that they brought me in to be the playmaker so they couldn't really 
add Delaney as much. So we had to, they had to figure out a way to use both of us at the same time. And Delaney would make plays. And it's, the career that he had at the Titans was Delaney being Delaney. He's, he's always been that way, but it was just hard to utilize him. So, I mean, wonderful experience, great player, and I wish him the best, and I'm always a fan. I love that, and I just, just the camaraderie between you two, and just what you guys just destroyed. Do you felt like you had three defenders on you? Like, like what you two did out there in San Francisco was always so fun to watch back in those days. Uh, and it, you know, we, I saw those highlights, that little music video we had leading in here. I gotta think you got something left. I just spent time with you. You're in shape. You're like, like, do you ever think? Do you ever miss it? We have so much going on. Do you miss it? Okay, I woke up this morning, <laughs> and I felt like I was playing for the San Francisco 49ers. I had a dream that I was playing football. I miss it, I dream about it all the time. Some mornings I wake up and I feel like calling my agent, saying, hey, I wanna, I wanna, I think I wanna play for one more year. So I'm always getting the itch because I can, I can still do it. You know, I haven't stopped training. I'm always working, I work out five days a week. And a lot of things that I do is what I learned from uh, training from football. And I, and I didn't stop, I don't lift as heavy anymore, but I run the same and I, I do some of the drills at times. Okay, well, let's unpack, I mean, just, let's unpack this a little bit. What is the, like, when you're having these dreams, take me into the dream, what are you actually dreaming about? Paint me the well, picture. Well, the dream this morning, I was I was lined up at wide receiver, and I had a guy on me, and I, you know, I did what we always do as a receiver, hit the little shake, you know, <laughs> get him off balance, and then take off. So I, I took off, and I caught, like, it was like a 50-yard pass, and... I scored a touchdown. But you know one thing? I couldn't remember who the quarterback was. Oh, come on. Who was the, the quarterback, quarterback, Vernon? Who was the quarterback? It was a guy throwing me the ball. I don't know. I didn't see his face. They didn't say his name. Who was the I defender? I just can't remember who. The def there was no, de there was just a defender. I couldn't tell. It was, you know how your dreams are a little blurry? It was just a blurry dream of me just making a play. Was your quarterback Aaron Rodgers, potentially? Ah, uh, okay. Uh, we need to call your okay. agent. I need to get this. I think you should come back. I mean, how? If Aaron, you're, you're, Aaron like Aaron like old tight ends. He like old tight ends. He, he could. He, I, I, I'm not kidding. We need to get you to Green Bay. If there was a team that you could pick and it worked, to strap up for and go like like who you got? What teams? Give me a rundown of attractive ones. Well, uh, well, I feel like Tom Brady's going to come back one year, so I will go to Tampa. So you, Tom see, is coming back. What is that? How do you know? I just a guy like Tom. He's not going to take. He's just. He's all. He's so competitive, and I feel like I feel like he definitely come back one more year. I don't know why, but I just feel it may not be with Tampa, but he's coming back. But you would say Tom over over Aaron and what's going on up there in Green Bay. I'm worried about both. I wouldn't send you to either. I don't think. Yeah, I go with Tom. I, I think. I, yeah, I'm, I, I know. I hear you, but I just. I don't know. I take my chances with Tom. I say, I don't even know. Anybody have tight end destinations for, for Vernon Davis? Hit us up at Epin Adams. I, you just blew my mind. I think you're going to go. I thought you were going to. I honestly, Vernon, just knowing a little bit about, I thought you were going to say you don't miss it at all. Really? Yeah, I did. Because you're just so invested in so many other things. And so, you're just not. I, <laughs> I, 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 you, really, you really blew my mind there. That, I did not think that. But now we got to manifest you on a team somewhere. But while we're doing that, what else do you have going on, and what do we need to be looking out for? I'm uh, working on a book. I'm working on this Morgan Freeman movie. It's supposed to come out next month in November, and I'm on a show called Magic with the Stars. So make sure you tune in and check that what out. What is that? Magic with the Stars is was created by Chris Angel. So basically, I'm competing on a show against Flavor Flav, and <laughs> stop it right now. Chris Angel's taught us three tricks and we had to perform in front of a vast audience. Bada bing, bada boom. And it's you and Flava. Yeah. Do you win? You Flava. can't tell us. I can't tell you all that. You gotta watch. <laughs> you gotta watch. See, uh, you gotta watch. Just watch it. We gotta watch. I can't, I, where can we see that and when? It's on CW. I think my episode should come out between now and the next two weeks, I believe. You mop the floor with Flava Flav. Don't even. Don't even. I can't Look, wait Flav's to watch that. my guy. Let me tell you. Flav and I go way back. We, I used to hang out with this guy back in the day. And for us to be on the show together, it was so awesome to see this guy and work with him because we never worked together, but we are friends. We've always been friends. But he's, he's, quite, he's quite the guy. He's a, he's a great human being, one of the best human beings I've ever met. 
What's the goal for you? Is it winning an Oscar? Is it winning a Grammy? Is it having a blockbuster movie? What is mainstream fame as an actor? What is it? I think going back and winning another Super Bowl. Well, Vernon Davis wants to come back to the NFL! I had no idea. Okay, well, my... I'm, other, joking. I'm messing with you. I'm, I'm Hey, I'm just joking. I I'm don't just believe joking. you now. A Buffalo Bills? I'm just joking. Why don't you walk in? Why don't you walk into Buffalo, like, week, you know, the first week of the playoffs, which they're not even going to be playing, and just go up there while it's cold, get yourself a good fireplace, and win yourself another ring? <laughs> I like that idea. <laughs> no disrespect to Dawson Knox. But you can team back up with uh, Vaughn. Vaughn Miller. Yeah, that'd be great. That was awesome. Can you believe how well he's playing he's at 33 up there right now? Well, it shows that I, well, um, when you're playing like that at that age, he's he's definitely taking care of his body. He's doing all the things that he need to do to to make sure that he can go out and be productive. He's doing it. He did it while I was when we were playing at Denver. So I know he's he's definitely taking care. What of What does himself. that mean? You guys are professional athletes. Everybody takes care of themselves like at a max. So what, what does he do that's so much better than everybody else? Well, it's it's to look so. This, just because you're a professional athlete doesn't mean that everyone is doing the same thing. Hmm. Being a professional athlete means getting three massages a week, seeing a chiropractor twice a week, making sure you're eat, eating properly, uh, making sure you're consuming your protein right after practice, having carbs before practice, and doing that for the duration of your career. Like, if you're, if you're in the NFL for 14 years, you need to do that for 14 years. Mm -hmm. A lot of guys don't do that. And, and as well as stretching four to five times a day. You, you wouldn't believe it. I mean, it's just, that's why there's some guys who are, who are great and have the longevity, and there's some guys that don't. Like guys like Tom Brady and Von Miller and Vernon Davis, who's coming to an NFL <laughs> playoff-bound team near you. Vernon, congrats on all of the success. Of course, hopefully I see you soon, but uh, until then, you can just keep teaching people how to bounce like this. Teach me how to bounce like this. I love it. I love the song. I love it. All right, you're the best. Talk to you soon, okay? I right, see you later. All right, Kay. Guys, give us teams. He should. He meant that, right? He's not messing with me. Buffalo, no. Who needs him? Man, Cardinals snap eight game home losing streak. Offense puts up 28 points as soon as D. Hep gets back on the field. NFC West is wide open. I don't know why. Loved having Vernon Davis on the show. Nicole, who is a big fan, says in his dream he was lined up at wide receiver. Get the man. A cheese head. I was lost for words in that interview because I for sure thought he would say, no, nah, okay, like I had a great time. I mean, he went, got traded midseason, won a Super Bowl ring. Nobody walks off like that. But he, and then he doubled back and said he wants another one. That, that was absolutely stunning. I did not see that coming. Nobody's doing more cool stuff than Vernon. So for him to put that out there, that was, um, that, that was amazing, and uh, I, I, I love the Buffalo idea. I also think the Eagles would be an interesting one. Um, you know, I don't think he's going anywhere to be the guy at this stage. Obviously, they have Goddard in place, but I think he'd be a great number two there. He'd fit in so well with what they like to do as well with, the, with all their 12 personnel sets that they like to run. Yeah, Eagles, do you want Vernon Davis? And I can't imagine, you know, I can't imagine it wouldn't be beneficial on both sides. Like he wants to play, obviously. That's just that's more of a passion project than someone looking to go strike some mega deal. Yeah, definitely. No, that's um, that was that was a little bit of a bombshell this morning on Up and Adams. I wasn't ready for that. <laughs> I he, really wasn't either. And then the fact that he was having dreams about it. You know, we, yeah. you and I have known Vernon for almost 10 years, I'd say. We've been talking to him, and I, you know, I remember interviewing him. He was one of my first interviews ever uh, at my very first Super Bowl in New Orleans when it was Niners, who was playing? Niners, Ravens. Ravens. Yeah, and I would go up to these tables, and it was very intimidating, and you'd go up and you'd be like, oh, hey, Jacoby Jones, like, will you talk to me? Like, well, you have to, you know, you have to elbow people. People are being mean to you. Like, you're this, like, you know, new girl in town. And, uh, and Vernon was so nice and so lovely and took so much time to talk to me. But through his career, he's one of those guys that you always felt like had so much else going on. He really reminds me of Burleson in that way. Of, you know, your career is super meaningful and you're obsessed with the game and it's this, like, 
you know, Nate always calls it the woman in his life, right? This like other woman that he was married to and had this passionate relationship with uh, through ups and downs. But, but there's players that you can just sort of see they have other stuff uh, that they're interested and passionate about. I'm shocked that he said he'd come back, and I also am shocked that he'd say said he'd go play with Brady. Yeah, I, I didn't see that one coming either. And he kind of put it out there that we may see Brady with a different team next year as well, that he he not only expects him to play, but he wouldn't be surprised if, it, if he was playing somewhere other than Tampa. So uh, that was pretty that was pretty incredible as well. I mean, who I thought we were just going to be talking about all the cool stuff Vernon yeah. does because there's so much of it. I didn't expect to get all this out of it. But yeah, I yeah. Do you I think, think that, uh, do, you, do you can you see that? Like, do you think? You know, and I, I honestly, like, I could see Vernon wanting to move to New York and take on like a Giants kind of thing. Look, they're six and one; they could use help. They're down wide receivers. We're talking about them. I, I could see a world where he, you know, if he wants to, that agent's definitely calling Dable and company and trying to get that done. A nice veteran in that locker room, not doing it all. Yeah, especially. I mean, all, that's basically all they use right now are tight ends because they don't have any receivers left. So uh, I feel like he'd fit in. He'd fit in perfectly. <laughs> Uh, but I could see him going to Tampa as well. They've had they've had injuries at the tight end position. Why not? Uh, let us know, guy. Yeah, they, I mean, they just signed a tight end from their practice squad. We we're seeing that, but that would be that would be an interesting thing that he put out. Because then I was trying to think. I was like, I asked him to come on the show, and like he would come on the show. But like, you know, how players will come on. Sh- this is this is what happens. If a player's been out of the game for a bit and they want interest. Then they start going on shows, right? They start saying, like, oh, remember me? Like, I'm here, whatever, because the NFL cycle moves so quick. So I thought he was coming to chop it on, but now part of me is like, oh, is he trying to, like, he knows that, like, Taylor is amazing at getting clips out and stuff. Like, is he trying to garner interest? (laughs) Because that's just the name of the game. Yeah, no, you're right. It is. It's a, you know, a lot of these guys over the years that we've seen come on, you know, going back to Good Morning Football, it's, it's to get the, to drum up that interest. Uh, from other teams so yeah I again I thought it was just to promote everything else he's doing because there's so much cool stuff but yeah yeah, that that could very well be the case I just I'm still shocked like I really (laughs) am because when we talked to him when he was playing it seemed like he almost had one foot out the door he was he was showing us his paintings and all the other stuff he had going on off the field so it seemed like he was like working his way into retirement even his last couple of years in the league I want him back I want him back especially because Delaney retired I love it because like some of these OGs are going away you know, we loved, we love these, you know, and you're seeing what's going on with Brady and Rodgers, and I, I don't like it. You know, I have a very hard time parting with the quarterbacks who got me through NFL, who, who I grew you know, when Rivers left and Big Ben left, it's just like a hard thing to swallow that you're getting older, that there's this like, you know, and there's so many young new new faces in the league. It's beyond crazy. Uh, so I'm headed to New York next week. I know that you've been informed of this. So you're on the East Coast. Yeah. I moved here two months ago, uh, right in right at the end of August, I believe, middle of August, and uh, and haven't been back since. And I'm very excited. And we're doing our show from parts unknown, somewhere. somewhere. <laughs> I mean, I looked at the specs. It looks a little um, somewhere. A warehouse. Like, it looks a little Sopranos, doesn't it? it looks a little like where yeah. something goes down. <laughs> goes down. I don't think Richard likes that we're, t- <laughs> we're trashing the studio that we're going to be in. But we're going to have a lot of fun. And I wanted to quickly get out of you like a dream guest. Do you have a dream guest that you would like to join us as we do our whole week of shows in New York? I think we have the same dream guest here. It's got to be Saquon Barkley right now with everything that's going on with the Giants. We, we've loved Saquon since he broke into the league. And I think it would just be so fitting to be in New York, get Saquon with the momentum the Giants have right now. It's true. I'm going to say Saquon. Again, I'm going back to Francesa. Francesa's people are not being the easy, you know, they're, they're, they're doing their job. But, like, come on. A Francesa K. Adams situation would be fantastic. Mike, Mike is never going to make it easy. We, yeah. we know this about oh, you know he's gonna it. he's gonna make it you gotta work for it with Francesca yeah everybody needs to tweet at Mike Francesa and Mons to make that happen because we he's really trying and he's been amazing Brian's been awesome he doesn't like when I call him Brian they're telling us that we, we have to get out of here we'll be back right after this on the Up and Adam show great stuff from Hamilton yes shows in New York I want Zach Wilson that's a good one Zach too Wilson. they told you we get us out of five they run this we almost go on a jet sweep, a full Hartman 15 inside the 10, breaks a tackle, stays in bounds, and hops into the end zone, touchdown, Kansas City, it is a jet sweep of 25 yards, 
to the sweet nectar in the end zone. Things you love to see every week we spotlight a player performance or a coach performance, a fan performance, something that was just awesome. And that brings us to that guy, McCole Hardman, who is amazing. They beat the Niners, and he claimed a piece of NFL history. That's right, three touchdowns against San Francisco. He became the first wide receiver in the Super Bowl era to finish a game with two rushing touchdowns and one receiving touchdown. Debo Samuel, take that! And he did it, by the way, playing through a nagging injury. I said it yesterday. McColl, I know you heard it because he retweeted it on our show, and we love you. And, you know, I'm always supporting you, but uh, it was amazing. This offense does not, in fact, miss one at Tyreek Hill, especially when guys like Hardman are lighting it up and stepping up and, you know, Amazing. Just amazing all-around performance uh, between Mahomes' offensive weapons. Cheers to you, and we hit the lights in your honor. More Up and Adam show coming up right here. We are, uh, we're going on Tinder. Moira! Yeah, which way do you swipe? This is, oh, this is making fun of me? Great, great. A ton of big names on the trade block, but that doesn't mean they're all right fits for their prospective team. So with that in mind, we are going to play a little trade dating. Uh, this is uh, in the vein of Tinder, which I've unfortunately never had the pleasure of being on as I am a shut down ninny who doesn't want to date ever. Uh... I don't think you're missing anything. It's uh, it's accessible out there. Oh boy! So. <laughs> but not in the NFL, which is what we're here to do. We're gonna swipe left, which is bad. Right, yes. which is good. And we're gonna help. Yes. We're gonna we're gonna help some needy teams find the right matches with trade dating. All right. Coming up, our first contestant, the Giants. We pull up the app. We look at this. All right, all right. I'm like, I, I'm kind of feeling this fit a little bit. I like him, but when I think about my needs as an adult on Tinder, trying to find true love <laughs> and fulfillment, I think I need somebody to be a real number one. Yeah, I'm with you. I, I like it from the standpoint, he's a good player. He's an easy contract to trade for, which I like too, because the Giants are up against the cap a little bit, but I think we can swing bigger. Let's go for a true number one. So are we swiping left Let's or swipe right? Swipe left. Swipe left. We're swiping left. Okay, let's see who the, this is fun. Okay, Giants, trade deadline, November 1, I believe. Okay, oh, Brandon Cooks. Brandon Cooks is, Cooks is that Cupid guy. And he's, you know, he's the guy who racks up a 1,000 yards. He's done it with four different teams. And he's, you know what, he's young. He's probably young and likes to have fun. He's not even 30 yet, so I like this one. <laughs> yeah, and the Giants might have to clear a little space to make this one work, but I love the fit. They're so run heavy, everything off of play action. You love that guy with the speed that can take the top off the defense. I'm swiping right. Okay, we're swiping right. I'm with I'm with Hamilton. I've never done this. And he looks like he he's talking like he has lots of experience with this. So we're doing it as we uh oh, this guy. This is like when you when you're on Tinder and you see somebody you know and you always hear those stories. <laughs> and and you're and you already have a crush on them because that's DJ Moore in my opinion. This is a true number one. This is what I'm looking for. And he's in a quarterback graveyard in Carolina right now. I want to make this happen. That's a great parallel. Are you sh are you sure you don't have experience with this? That that was a little too natural. I don't. Um, <laughs> I don't. I wish I did. <laughs> but uh, but yeah, I'm in I, I'm in agreement again. I think this would be the true number one the Giants are looking for. He he, you know, the contract balloons after this year, but it would they can find a way to make this work um, with the cap hit that he has right now. So I'm all for it. that. This is your true number one. This is the guy. Okay, so we're swiping. Right. Okay, so now it's between Cooks or Moore. Is Cooks or Moore a better fit quickly? I'm going Moore. Yeah. DJ Moore would be amazing for the Giants. And then you add in Vernon Davis, and it's a party for everybody. <laughs> All right, let's try to get through another team here. Uh, our next contestant is... The Rams. Oh, the Rams are like the your degenerate friend who's like in the middle of church and is swiping left and right because they love trading. They hate drafting. They love this stuff. So let's see. They need a running back. As we all know, they lost in the McCaffrey of it all. So Melvin, he's got that fumbling issue. What say you, right or left? I'm going left. His yards per carry have dropped by a full yard per carry along with that fumbling issue. So only three and a half yards a carry. I'm, I'm out. I feel like he's got like, uh, this is bad to say, like those best years behind him kind of thing where you're like, why are you on this app still? <laughs> like, shouldn't, shouldn't we be further in life? Yeah, yeah, I'm with you. Let's swipe left. Oh, Taylor, don't put that on Twitter. Okay. Oh boy. <laughs> How about, okay, so we swipe to, okay, and Kareem Hunt. Now this is a guy who's probably available. Yeah. 
Yeah, with the he demanded a trade before the season started. Don't forget, uh, he's he's kind of tired of being behind Nick Chubb. He's ready to get out there, be the number one guy, and I think he can do that in LA. He doesn't have the wear and tear on him either, even 27. though he's been in the league for a little bit. Yeah, just twenty seven, and he's only had four hundred ninety five touches over the last five seasons combined. So you're getting some fresh legs in there. He also has twenty touchdowns in his last thirty one games, and that's like as a backup. So I think we're both agreeing. It's a good fit. Swiping right. Swiping right. Uh, and that brings us to Alexander Madison. Ooh. Okay, so he started. Here's the here's the deal. This is, you know, when you see somebody on Tinder and then you go, what I would do if I was on it, I would go look at their Instagram, their LinkedIn, all of their receipts so I knew what they are before swiping left or right. And he started six games in his four-year career, but has put up over 100 total yards in four of those. I, I like this option a lot. You're right. He's shined every time he's gotten thrust into the starting role there when Dalvin Cook has dealt with some injuries. He's also going into the last year of his deal, so there's really no commitment. You can try him out, see if it works, and if you like him, you can extend him beyond that. If you don't, you can move on. Love him and leave him, according to Matt Hamilton. Yikes. Uh, all right. Let's just debate between these two, and then we'll wrap it up, and maybe we'll bring this back at the end of the week. Hunter Madison, are they a better fit for the L.A. Rams? I, I think I'd go Kareem Hunt there. I, I think we've seen him be, we've seen him lead the league in rushing. We know what his top end is. There's still some unknowns with Madison, so I'd go with the, with the more known quantity in Kareem Hunt. A great red zone option, just 27 years old. Uh, we are swiping. How am I so dumb right. that I don't know which one's good or bad still after this five minute segment? Hey, I've got news for you, ready? You, yes. put in, you put in work today, and I appreciate you. You've got a breakdown tomorrow ahead of Thursday Night Football, and Jordan Spieth couldn't get him today. Doesn't matter. It'll be even better tomorrow. That's right. Jordan Spieth on Up and Adam's show with Let's go. a million guests. It was our show two hours tomorrow. I'm curious how that's going to work out. But we'll see you guys tomorrow right here. And, yes, the trading game will be back on Friday. I just decided that was so fun.